is this divine being called Jesus? Did he actually exist? And did he actually do whatever is attributed to him as having done? The first problem is that nobody knows exactly where Jesus is. Things that is associated with Jesus' birth is about sharing, about love. Where do you get the charisma? And how can you convince me that God is not there? I will tell you, God, it's very reckless. You never talk to me even one day. In those days of the bed, I'm told you could come and manifest yourself. You cannot explain why you are what you are. Science has failed to explain the origin of man. Christmas Day was actually celebrated long before Jesus was born. And since the early Christians did not know exactly when Jesus was born, and particularly when the Roman Empire adopted Christianity as a state religion, they decreed that the birth of Jesus Christ should be remembered in that So politics played a big role in this day. That's the first thing you have to do. And unfortunately, as I've already indicated, right from the beginning, the day had long been associated with gods who made the sun go farthest of the religion. And then later on, it comes back. And I want to say the Romans before they became Christian, they would be accepted Christian but they were pedants. So Christmas is a day with pagan origin. It's a day it's a day of course, when the Roman became the Christian became a state of the Roman, of Rome, it became a bit holy. But the day itself, as a day, was no worship. By God, not God. Now that is the first thing. And you can see that problem. The other problem, as I get the idea, nobody knows exactly when Jesus was born. And where he was born. There is a story in the Bible, which actually, if you know the types of the weather prevailing during, during December in the north, in the northern hemisphere, you definitely find out that there are some technical errors in that day. Because as you may remember the story, that there were shepherds looking after their what? Flocks? That was when Jesus was being born. Technically, the shepherds could not have been in the bush looking after their flocks. Because it was cold. And during the winter, many of those animals are taken in the house. They are not left in the house. 
Again, it came to error because normally 25th of December in those regions generally is a cold day, and there's no there's no sensible shepherd who would live who would live to this crops in the wild yeah, to be affected by the weather. Problem. Then another problem was located the, the Romans adopted Christianity about more than 300 years after the death of Christ. So that day is technically embedded in the Christian worship. But one could legitimately ask on what basis? That would be a very legitimate question. On what basis? However, for the Christians who are here, it could actually, I call myself this person. I think we should be careful. To separate the spirit of what you call religion. There are many, many problems with the facts. But then there is the spirit which may be by So the question which was said. Is a valid question. What does it mean? First of all, is it authentic? And I'm sure, actually, I've thrown a lot of doubts in the authenticity of the day. So the day is associated with the path of Christ, but no, I'm not going to actually know. Because the blessing. And in fact, when you see a lot of literature, Jesus is 
Jesus. Before what we say, A D. So you supposed to have been born for this. So first of all, the past of Christ is assumed. It's officially recognized. Let me put it that way. It's officially recognized. But the fact is that it is not known. But this day was just this letter. It's a normal path. But the actual day of past of Christ is not known. So now, let me go back to the question. There are actual fundamental issues. For the Christian, since it was declared as the official worship, you can continue watching and remember the truth. Because historically, they the existence of Jesus is a historical fact. We talk about the relevance. The authenticity, you can say that on the issue of authenticity, you can say that Christmas was declared, officially declared, as the day when Jesus was born. So it was authenticated by the powers that were. But then when you want to authenticate in terms of real blessing on that particular day, so and so was born. That one is we are an academic question which cannot be really useful. Then the relevance. The relevance. Now, now, actually, as we talk now, with the whole world, it is relevant purely for commercial reasons to the world. It is relevant to the world for commercial reasons. But also for some people, for religious reasons. At this stage, I want to, to, to emphasize Jesus. It is important for people who believe in Jesus that he was born. And I agree with them that Jesus was born. But the problem is that to locate the place and the time. There are a lot of shadows. So we can celebrate Christmas Day. If you believe in Jesus, you can, say, you can tell him to celebrate Christmas Day because it was officially declared. Just as, a, for example, in Uganda, we celebrate the birth of the Kama. Do you know exactly when he was born? And where? Those may be important to some people. But for Buganda as a kingdom, you know he was born. And we can celebrate. So in the same similar way for Jesus. He was born. And then we can celebrate his birth. But I hope I've given you some aspect for you to continue thinking. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, this concept itself is not easy to understand because you are depending on which side you fall. But uh, thank you very much. Uh, we shall be hearing from uh, Mr. Katonkasa. 
uh, sita don't my right uh, Mr. Katum Kasa is an economist and a lawyer by training he is also chairman of African working group of international humanist ethical union uh, with headquarters in UK he is also the executive director of Haleya uh, which in full is Humanist Association for Leadership Equity and Accountability. He is a, finally a human rights activist advocate. You're welcome, Katum uh, Though I know the topic is Christmas, and I'm saying uh, towards a secular nation, why Christmas is just another day. I'm secular, I don't believe in God or in the spirit. And I'm a humanist who is also an atheist. So, I'll begin uh, by saying that Jesus Christ is a good man. And why should anyone believe in him? Let alone celebrate his birth. A good man. I want to thank the professor. The professor is my mentor. The professor has made my work easier. Actually, I'm going to be jumping so many slides because he has given us part of the history. So I'll just be as brief as the minister because actually you have told us the history, which I had also documented. Now I'm saying that friends, holiday season 2014 is almost upon us. And the world Christmas, I will talk about Christmas. And we say it's almost upon us. And um, I call it my world Christmas. I have many reasons which I'll be giving. <laughs> Uh, because especially we are celebrating a God who was also a human being. And as the professor has said, whose origin some of us are doubting and the authenticity of his existence actually also being um, doubted. Now, there is, uh, I refer to a leading German encyclopedia from the Protestant Church. It is called Religion in Geschichte, or whatever it is, it's a German word. And all we can say, religion in history and present. Next. Um, now, it states under Christmas that, um, that it is probably of pagan origin. Pagan. And this is what we are saying. Pagan origin. Um, I'm putting something in red. Celebrate on January 6th. If you look at the history, originally, they could celebrate uh, the so called Day of Christ on. January 5th, and there is no tradition of celebrating the birth of Jesus on the date of Christmas. Basically, when you look at the history, there was no celebration on January 5th. On the history, there are so many histories we have been through. If you look at the Romans, yeah, uh, that uh, for them, when you look at that Roman winter solstice day, yeah, that period, the same January 5th was changed in, into a Christmas holiday. Or Christmas. Now, they just change this and just move, just move. And it was a deity, there was a kind of God. So, the so called Jesus Christ's birth was never known and was not celebrated actually until uh, uh, before, before the end of the fourth century, it was never celebrated. So, the decision came about because one of the Roman emperors, as we will say, who wanted to change back to the Roman religion away from Christianity, had gained strength, again strength in the tradition of the celebration of the sun god, and marked the sun god on December 25th. So you can look at the sun god, the sun god. So the day is a fiction. In other words, I'm wondering why should we be concentrating on a fiction? So, continue. And there was also a birth of God Mithras, who was the son of God from or past. And when you look at all that history, which I'm going to say to those who want to read, you find a mystery, you find a myth, something you cannot actually prove that is exactly the, the, the birth of Jesus Christ. And we are even saying that there is no proof for it whatsoever, including the astronomers, never found proof of a star of Bethlehem. The so called star of Bethlehem, those guys who have studied the stars. I've never found it. So, as a humanist and a little atheist, I stopped believing in Christianity. The day I lost my blind faith. 
uh, I call it blind faith because they believe like a sheep, no question, dogmatic. So the day I became, <laughs> I stopped believing in that kind of dogmatic faith, and I don't see any one reason why I should celebrate Christmas. For me, at least, I don't know what you can do to tell me why I should celebrate it. Because first of all, even the man called Jesus, in my view, might not have might have not existed in my view Jesus might have been a creation of some fellows and therefore there is no meaning whatsoever so I am going to borrow writings from my friends Tom Flynn in America an author on Christmas extensively I have talked to him a number of times and it seems in the UK I learned power these authors whom I have talked to also have written on Christmas so I am going to be borrowing a few views from them. Let us move. <coughs> now Flynn, who is an American, has written a book on Christmas and is also doubting seriously. But he says that on a more serious side, I also learned that more people die from heart attack or heart diseases on Christmas Day, New Year's Day, and the calendar posting day than any other dates on the calendar. And you can imagine, why should people be dying on a Christmas Day? And because of attacks, there is no chicken, there is no fuku, there is no meat. So guys are dying. And actually, goes to, I have to say in this book, because it's blessing on Europe anyway, but again, when you look at us in Africa, almost the same happening here. It says that when you look at January as a season, it is the time when most of us are very poor. Some of you may agree with me. Sometimes we are so, so poor because we have spent so much during Christmas time. And this is Flynn is an American writing, but again, when you look at his writing, you believe that he is making sense out of his soul. He become poor after Christmas, and then after that sense, Christmas becomes a curse. And the suicide rate in the U.S. after Christmas in the world, eh, in those countries of breaking cards and all that, people kill themselves because there's nothing left. You know, so Christmas becomes so stupid a day that I cannot even celebrate it. And um, when you look at, um, just go to the, another stage, I will leave that. Um, I will leave that, just another slide. So, the paradox of Christmas, as Tom Flynn puts it, is a very good reason. And the idea of a good man born in a humble circumstance, I won't go into that. He has talked about, because the church has talked about these things, you know? A man who was born in Elijah, something like that, and these wise fellows who left there. <laughs> How can you be wise and you leave your ship? You must be very stupid. So, these wise fellows in courts leave their ship and they go to look for a man called Jesus Christ. So, for me, that's the first thing that makes sense. So, when you look at that, actually, the point is there is an ancient pagan origin uh, of. Uh, Christmas. Uh, just go ahead. Now, the wise men have talked about them. But I'll go to what Tom says down there. He's saying that Christmas is precisely just another day. No tree, no presents, no visiting, no mysterious, no wasn't born, and it's a normal day. And I enjoy spending it, actually, now this is me. I enjoy spending it with my little children. I have children personally. Making noise or reading a good book. Better still, I enjoy going to my office and do some good work. After on Christmas, I go and work. If I don't stay it with my, I do it with my children because I read a lot. I have children. If I don't go to work, I go and do something which is more productive than actually wasting a lot of time in a Christmas which I don't know whose origin it is. That's why next. Now, Tom Flynn says in his book that I wasn't the first to follow the winter path. In 1633, he's giving us an example there, an English, English lawyer named William Prime wrote a book fierce and critical of Christmas. As far as I know, it is the only book in English, in the English language, prior to my own, to have made an uncompromising effort to debunk this press and do away with the holy. What happened to Prime? He was a Puritan, some of you know he was a Puritan. And what happened is that Charles the First had been thrown in the Tower of Babylon, Tower of London. Those of you have gone to London, you know the Tower of London, I've gone there, I've seen these towers. And this guy was thrown 
in the town of London, uh, of the town of London, tried before in the Star Chamber, paroled in the stocks, fined five thousand pounds back when that was real money, and he was ejected from Oxford and expelled. And oh yes, the band is what? <laughs> now you can imagine that in those days, even criticizing Christmas itself, the way we are doing was criminal. So that guy had to face it rough. Now I want to. I want to ask you some questions as I wind up. A few questions to ask, and I'm saying, let us think together. Question number one Where in the Bible does it say to celebrate Christmas? So I'll be waiting for Christians because I'm not. They call me pagan, which I don't care. So I'll be waiting for these Christians to tell me just the one verse in their Bible, in their creation called the Bible. Where? Where Christmas is written. Once I see it, then I will it next time. Now, and you can look at it. Just the tradition, you know. You know what the tradition. And I emphasize in red. It is for commercial purposes. Commercial, as the professor was saying. Commercial. Make money, make money, and more money. And and when they have pagan and unbiblical origins, which means they are unchristian. Surely, any Christian acts will not be favored by this. Because when you look at, I'm going to add in the next page, next page, I'm going to show you a bit of things that they do on Christmas as a tradition, as a culture. Now, not even Christian. The Bible does not call for Jesus' birthday celebration. And where does it mention the birth of the dead, the death of Jesus Christ, which is uh, 25th of December? Where? Yeah. It's not there. So it is still simply chosen as I'm putting it there. And in this note, therefore, a falsehood or blasphemy. Because as Christians use the word blasphemy, they normally claim blasphemy, blasphemy. Now, if you get a debt which is not there, which is a creation, and you make it to be real in courts, that's a falsehood. And two, you are blasphemy if that word actually exists. Because some of us even doubt why we should actually be talking about that. Next page. <laughs> Look at some of these cultures, the traditions. It's common even for Christians on Christmas, uh, for Christmas dinner, especially in America and the UK. Other foods such as goose are also eaten. However, where in the Bible does it say to eat these types of food to celebrate this birthday? Those are questions I'm asking a pastor and the question to tell me that when you are eating a goose, when you are eating a turkey, in the Bible, where is it documented that you must eat it? So it, to me, it's just a culture. It's a tradition. You are simply doing something that makes you happy. Now, when you look at the Jews, their method of slaughtering their animals, and you look at the way people also do it here, and if you are not following the way they are doing it because Jesus was a Jew, then it means that meat is, is, is that meat kosher? Is that meat holy? Next. And uh, look at Santa Claus, for example. Some of you, and I believe, of course, most of you have heard about Santa Claus who have seen him. I look at the history of Santa Claus, who is a well known fiction character based on the Saint Nicholas, the first century bishop of Myra. And look at the clothes. Initially, they were green in color, but when the scholar took over Santa Claus. The clothes changed to red. And now, many Christians actually worship in the courts. Worship in the courts Santa Claus. And they talk about don't worship the idol. Don't worship idols somewhere in their Bible. Now, I'm wondering whether the Bible doesn't forbid you from worshiping Santa Claus with some of the actual God. And praise. Next. Now, another question I'm asking Christians and the believers of Christmas to tell me is where does the Bible mention buying gifts for family and friends for Christmas Day? The Bible says that three wise men gifted gold, francis, and mirth to baby Jesus. But he, Jesus then authorized his followers to give gifts of perfumes. They were toys, technology, and Christmas cards. Eh? 
So I'm asking and I'm wondering, the issue of the gifts on Christmas, is it Christian? Did Jesus Christ in any way, anyway in the Bible, say, give the gifts, send the Christmas card? To me, I believe it's a creation of people and something which is outside Christianity. If they believe, the way it should be. The other question is, where does the Bible mention the use of Christmas trees? And I have a problem there. First of all, from the environmental point of view, the Christmas trees, you go, you cut our trees, that you are decorating your houses. First of all, you are destroying the environment. <laughs> That's one. And it's criminal. It's really criminal to destroy the environment. So some of us are going to begin suing companies that are selling trees. It's criminal. So we are saying, is cutting over our trees in the Bible? After all, the Bible is saying, if you look at your Bible, it is saying protection of this environment. Look at Jeremiah 10. I was looking at it. What does it say? So why do you go ahead and cut trees, you Christians? So we are saying, there you are going wrong. The Bible, your Christmas, doesn't authorize you to go and cut our trees. So stop cutting our trees. Now, the other thing I'm also asking is, why not? Like ultimately, Christmas is the biggest commercialization of Christianity. And I want to put it in red, more red. If you do things outside the teaching of Jesus, as you claim, are you creating your own cult? It's like a cult. This Christmas thing, you are doing things outside your so-called Jesus. So, there's something wrong. Now, when you look at today, it's about making money. I want you to tell me today in Uganda, a priest was called, being called a priest who is poor. And I'm calling them there are no poor priests, rabbis, imams, and pandits. Where, when, a religion, when a religious leader defends his faith, the question is, I'm asking, is he truly defending his God or his financial interests? That's my question. Now, major observations. Major observations. Christians should accept that Christmas is just another holy day. Whether you want it or not, for us we are saying it is just another normal day. Like Independence Day, we don't care. Darwinism Day, some of us make about it, others don't care. Boxing Day, tomorrow's day, it is it is it. So, there shouldn't be any mandatory obligation that we should observe it, that offices should close. No way. I just do our business. Go and do our Christmas. Eh? Now, don't find rights. That celebrate, celebrators should be quoted to keep Christmas at their central holiday of their particular communities without expecting the whole of the larger culture to join their party. Have your party in peace, leave us in peace. Next, I'm saying we should set our sights on a future in which Christmas is one holiday among many. This is what I'm saying. It should be one holiday among the many. And do not feel shy to say, Happy holiday. That's the message I'm giving. On Christmas, I'll tell you, happy holiday. I said, happy Christmas, I'll tell you, happy holiday. Me, I don't believe in that stuff. So, happy holiday, happy holiday, happy holiday. And therefore, Christmas will be broken down in a few years' time. Just go down. Uh, when, should, when should, however, when should, when we should have a big quick to add, just like what Tom Green writes, happy holidays, but only if you are having any... Happy holidays. Oh no, when you are having what? Because I may be so poor. Why are you telling me happy, happy Christmas? What have you given me? Yeah? What have you given me? Actually, what I have observed in Europe is that, and you can go, you can go there put on the list and prove me right or wrong. In Europe, I visit some churches, a few churches on Sundays. But I can tell you, you can find out on your own, churches are getting empty and empty and empty each growing Sunday in Europe. But in Africa, we go struggling to give a pastor our little money. In Europe, they are saying, build their church. Actually, I can send you uh, an article if you want, showing you how many things have been turned into bars, restaurants, restaurants in, in Rwanda. Because people are saying, churches? What? Wait a minute. Why should I waste my time on the church business? So, happy holiday and happy holiday. Go next, next, next. So, I'm saying, in, fi in finality, I'm saying that I am waging a war and a peaceful war on Christmas. A peaceful one. No demonstrations. But as, a, as an individual, I'm saying I want to respect 
Christmas. I won't promote it. I won't observe it. It's useless in my life. It has no meaning. It's a fallacy. It's a false hope. And let us all, as I said, be against all the practices that destroy our environment, such as cutting our trees. And I'm hopeful that in a few years' time, perhaps I may be long gone, but many people all over the world, and in particular Africa, will wake up and realize that it's meaningless to celebrate a birth of a person that was a creation of some people to control their minds. I normally say that religion is a creation of a man or men or women to control your minds. Some of us have been lucky to escape, but the millions are still under the control of a God, and there is no God. I'm always very sure on that, unless someone shows me where God sits, but I've never seen a God anywhere. Go ahead. I don't care. So I'm, I'm saying, actually this is the last one, I'm saying that, uh, and I've always suggested, on a serious note, I want you guys to join me. And on a serious note, as I conclude, eh, I want you guys to join me. And if we have a law on a serious note that will tax all churches seriously, coin by coin, we tax churches as seriously as possible so that whatever they earn, we earn at least a percentage as Ugandans because it has become a business. Everyone who's poor starts the church. The next day they are rich. So I'm suggesting a church tax. And if that's the problem of the church tax, we shall be gradually out of poverty, but also we shall have fewer and fewer charges in this country. I thank you so much. Thank you. But we are going to proceed this way. We are going to have your comments. I'm afraid to see how we came. Time of And now, I don't know. But, okay, Jose. I want to first clarify um, Professor's uh, assertion uh, that uh, uh, there would have been no shepherds out during Christmas night. Uh, he was making that assertion basing on the assumption that uh, on the assumption of the weather in Europe, but uh, at this point in time we are discussing about conditions that were in the Middle East. So I don't know that in the Middle East during Christmas time the, the, the weather is so harsh. Uh, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just asking. Uh, for me, I'm not going to be very harsh. I'm, I'm a skeptic. I'm a skeptic. I always doubt the existence of God and all those Bible stories. Uh, but, you know, Christmas would have been relevant if people followed or used to reflect on Jesus' teachings. What is it if he existed? But the problem is, it's all about uh, flamboyance, eating, dance, music, and that. And then, uh, just like a marriage, just like marriage ceremonies here in Africa, where it's all about the convoy, the number of cars, the size of the town public, at around 8 or 10 years old, and it suffices to cause chaos at around 30 years. So I don't know what he was doing in between 10 and 30, whether he had, whether he had gone into a balance, I just don't know, so I'm just inquiring. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, our good professor, Katom Kasa, and the, the participants. To me, the issue shouldn't be about the death. <laughs> Definitely, even even here in Uganda, we have we have someone in a higher in a very high echelon, by the way, who, notwithstanding of not knowing his exact birthday, still goes ahead and does what and celebrates. So, to me, the question would be: Was well, is this human being or the, or is this divine being God Jesus? Did he actually exist? And did he actually do whatever is attributed to him as having done? To me, I have no slightest reason whatsoever not to believe that Jesus never existed. I have no slightest reason. Why should I? Why should I not believe? I was surprised by Comrade Katomukasa when he was referring to, I think, some wife, you know, I even forgot some names, that he has talked to him several times. So for him, he believes he believes in that white man more than more than what 
more than the, more than what he found written and more than what we what was witnessed. Now, and he wants me to believe. He wants me to believe him. He wants me to believe in what he's telling me. And yet I was not there when he was talking to that man. So why would you why would I believe in you? When I was not there when you were talking to that man, and yet you, you are you are saying you are not believing in Jesus okay, because you never saw him and you you are not there when he was there. So, the Orthodox in Russia, they celebrate it on the 6th of January. So you find that maybe any Christian comes up with their own voice. So let's not stick on the day. But the fact is that this man could be existed. And he to me, they saw such I know that he was a humble his humble character. He was a healer who never asked any money from a person. Unlike our today's pastors who, 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 who intend to ask money every time for promising people to big miracles. So what are the benefits of Christmas, Mr. Chairman? The benefits are enormous. It comes the almost climax at the end of the year closing. It means it's home, homecoming, visiting friends, relatives. So when people are resting and cut off stress after working on streets of camp, I'm going to buy and rest in my future. There are a lot of benefits. So I can't stress that. A lot of points have been raised, uh, Mr. The, the moderator of this program. And I just want to uh, respond to, a, to, to some of the points that were raised. Um, the word Christmas, for example, uh, is talking about the Christ Mass. That means a Mass that is celebrated in commemoration of uh, somebody that is supposedly called Jesus. However, in the, uh, I think it's the second encyclopedia that the Catholics put together, they admit in that encyclopedia that they do not know when Jesus was born. You know what I'm saying? So, Christ Mass is, is, is what? You know? It's really, to, to understand some of these things, you have to understand words like pagan. Words like pagan, words like atheist, words like, uh, uh, words like uh, religion, you know? When, when uh, Constantine had a dream that the cross is what he was going to use to uh, uh, take over or conquer, he had a dream, remember? Then that's when Christianity becomes a state religion. Before Christianity was a state religion, it was Theos. And anybody who was against Theos, which is where you get the word atheist, is really, at that time, that person was in trouble with Constantine. You know, but when Christianity became the state religion, what happens? Christianity now becomes the, the endeared religion. Moving right along. Now the day, 25th December. Before 25th December, I think you have at least seven different months. Some months have two days in which Christian, uh, in which Xmas or Chris, Christmas was switched. They kept switching it, switching it, switching it. But why was this happening? It was happening because, remember when they convened in the Council of Nicaea, 325 AD, what did they decide? They decided that white people were too violent, they were getting too nasty, so they wanted something to pacify them, to dumb them down. So they got together and said, all right, let's talk about this. Let's, let's deliberate. And so you would have people saying, for example, uh, man, he's telling me to summarize. Anyway, you would have people saying, that for those who say that Jesus has blonde hair, say, what do they say, I? Then, you know, then they'll get a majority vote. For those who say that Jesus has got blue eyes and not brown eyes, y'all put your hands, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I wanna I wanna raise a few more points. There ain't got no letter that is similar to J. So where did the word Jew come up? It came up in 17, I think it was 1739. Remember when they convened in the Council of Nicaea, they found that they could use religion to do what? To conquer, to overtake. So what, what, what Christianity does, it unifies the oppressor and it makes the oppressed do what? It makes the oppressor, the oppressed people say what? To follow. You know, remember there are scriptures that say that uh, uh, slaves obey your masters. 
What does that mean to oppress people? That means you accept the system that is oppressing you. All right? I got to go. So thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm called the Sikh Ramadan. I'm a Muslim. Uh, and I would like to begin by asking, by a show of hands, how many people, how many people celebrate Christmas here? By a show of hands. Right from the right from the high table, how many people celebrate Christmas here? Even okay, the pastor does not celebrate Christmas. And how many actually don't celebrate Christmas? Again, okay, pastor does not. Celebrate. And how many actually don't know whether they whether they should celebrate or they should not actually celebrate? Is it here? Um, Atom uh, Kasa, you break my heart when you say that you don't believe in God and that God is not even there. And this gentleman is a you know, who's your follower. He's, he's a skeptic. He's not sure whether God is there. And he has the fifty percent God is there. So I will not, where do you get the charisma? And how can you convince me that God is not there? Where do you get the charisma? Then um, uh, me as a Muslim, what does Christmas mean to me? To me, um, Christmas is a holiday. It's a holiday. Uh, we normally get to lots of visitors coming home. We dine, dance, sing, meet new visitors, go out, and that's all. I want us to focus more on the birth of Christ. You understand? That's what I'm interested in. It's a fascinating topic for me because I want to prove my intellect. I don't believe I should just stop reading books just when I preach the Bible. There are many things to learn. Even when you're studying religion, especially Christianity, you just read the Bible, you read other books. So let's focus more on the path, not on the death. Okay. My name is Sophia Florence Ovoyo. I come from a big district. My take on this issue is actually the discussion should be not on the day or what what is not being done. The relevant I think we should focus, like you say, on the birth, birth of Christ. Why should we do this? Does it still have a meaning or not? If, because if you look honestly on what happened, it's about joy, and of course that is why Christ was born. People are joyous, people celebrate, and that is what Christ was stressing. He wanted people to be together in fellowship, share, because I had him say, where is it written in the Bible that you should give gifts on Christmas? Honestly, what kind of question is that? Things that is associated with Jesus' birth is about sharing, about love. And I think that is how we should see it. Okay, that point. So about Christmas, my own view of Christmas is, I believe that Christmas is important in our society because uh, even in our personal lives, Christmas is a yearly activity. And I'm one who appreciates that we need to look back at uh, what we have done in the year, the experience we have had, and uh, we see how we can make it better. Times of Christmas is a time when people relax, they are stress-free from work, they associate more with friends, they go back and talk to their family members, and they forge ways of maybe the problems they have been facing. And please, my own, uh, maybe what I need to talk about is, the concern also comes like when you exaggerate the celebration of Christmas. Because as Mr. Katonkasa was saying, Christmas should be uh, utilized by, especially the clergymen in this country, to help the people who are tortured, like one uh, of us say. But then you find the situation is actually the opposite. It is the poor, these people who ha uh, actually don't have, that are giving the rich today, when you look at church, it is a business, like I said, and I just don't like that. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm called Mark Paguna. Uh, my deliberation on Christmas, I'm saying that, that name should be even changed. At least 
they should call it annual celebration because uh, facts say uh, something like we were almost 2 billion people in the whole world are the ones who celebrate Christmas and yet we could be around 7 billion or beyond what about the rest? Should they be omitted out? At least should be annual celebration whereby it is known that everybody has to participate in celebration, share. Do everything to, uh, to enjoy themselves the end of the year. Thank you. I am Robert from Campbell University. For me, I would say, we, when we are discussing on this topic or deliberating on this issue, we are missing out something very crucial. Yeah, we are looking at Christmas, but we have really neglected the testing whether or not is, the, is Christmas really existent. Many of us are deliberating in the line that Christmas actually is, is like a holiday. So therefore, as far as I'm concerned, it should do, I would do, actually agree with this gentleman who said even the name can be changed. Because under which guise are we, ce are we celebrating it? We shouldn't just celebrate a Christmas or a concocted event without knowing whether it truly it exists. So I would really say, for me, as long as people are celebrating Christmas, in the line of Christianity, then I will not celebrate. Yeah, um, you don't remember. I, I want to ask about the Christmas, I think is relevant in as far as it shows the social colonization by the West, how, it's, how, it's, how it has been a success. Because no, the fact is that no one has proved whether, whether Jesus exists or he never existed. But anyway, in the case of Christmas, on the other hand, I believe we need to celebrate Christmas because um, your know, life would be meaningless without such days and events. But also, I want to request the pastor when he's talking about uh, the when he's talking about Jesus. I want to request him to talk about the personal life of Jesus, that personal touch, the humanity of Jesus had. Did he have any children in case he existed, and did he socialize with women? Then also, on the other hand, I also wanted to add a question for Professor for his presentation. He talked about the divergence between, between James and Paul. I want to shed some light on the on those divergences. Did uh, maybe did James say because of the emphasizing James was talking about the personal touch of Jesus? Did he maybe say Jesus had wives or something like that? Thank you very much. Jesus was not born on, on 25th December. Christmas was even celebrated. It was a day for the date, and that date was so strong to the, to the people by that time. So they only bought, they only changed it to Christmas because they looked at this as the day, as the powerful day, as a celebration. Angle and stress it so strongly that it's very, very relevant. But I do believe that back of his mind, he will be stressing the commercial reasons rather than the religious reasons. Thank you so much. Okay. The man of God, uh, Pastor Male, in order to most of us, I guess all of us. I raise straight hands and uh, receive him with a very big hand clap. He is speaking to us. Uh, he made sure he makes it at this late hour. But so I call for your patience. No question, no comment as he speaks. The church setting. What we are talking. Thank you very much. And uh, I wish to greet you in the name of the Lord. That praise the Lord. Let me start off with responding to the last speaker. I think it's wrong to be prejudiced. Even if all of the pastors are thugs, it's bad that you banned on me with them. How did you know that I was going to emphasize Christmas for commercialization? That means that right from the outset you don't even know the person you are talking about. And then you you, you try to talk about it. Next time, first listen to someone who's speaking, then you can make a comment. That is what we call a cultured person. Thank you. Christmas. The truth is that no one knows the exact date of the birth of Jesus Christ. No theologian has ever proved 
that Jesus Christ was born on such a day or such a day. What we know is that Christmas evolved in about the fourth century and uh, that day was a celebration for the unconquered sun. So it was a pagan celebration which was Christianized because Christians wanted to win over the pagans to Christianity and the best way they thought they could do it was not antagonizing them because if you put it on a totally different date they would not respond but if you put it on their day then they would respond but I believe that little did they know that putting Christmas on a pagan day would eventually erode its importance and then make it a totally pagan celebration if you all remember that this celebration was inaugurated by the Roman Empire, Emperor, Emperor called Aurelian and they used to celebrate the God Son and that is when the God Son was born and it was 25th December during the reign of Emperor Constantine Christian writers assimilated the feast to the birthday of Jesus Christ associating him with the son of righteousness meaning that since he is born he's supposed to be the light of the earth the light of the world so instead of celebrating the birth of the unconquered son the god of the the, the unconquered son we can turn it and say that yes the son that was supposed to be born was jesus christ so that's when they started christianizing it uh, still in the first century john Chrysostom promoted the celebration of christ's birth on 25th december but the truth is that that was not the day that christ jesus was born and it will never be the day because that day is not known and no one can claim to say that that was when jesus christ was born even if spirit filled god in his wisdom decided that people should not know and i believe and i think the reason he did so was that people would celebrate the day more than they honor the works of the person who started Christianity and that is Jesus Christ apparently it would not have been bad to celebrate the birth of the mentor the birth of a hero the great leader great teacher and savior had it not been for the evils committed instead that today the celebrations are full of more evils than good and if a question was asked that has christmas done more good or evil i'm sure many people with bleeding hearts would cry and say i wish christmas never came Amina. let me make my points clear what usually happens on christmas is this we are preparing for christmas and what are many people planning the married are planning to cheat on their spouses virginity will be broken this christmas as it has already been broken at the peak of excitement celebration there comes the inability to control one's emotions and usually it is when we are so happy or when we are so sad that we tend to break loose when specially approached for sexual activity and that is why only fool would argue about what i'm saying that christmas season is now a season of breaking marriages of rending people's hearts tearing them to pieces just because spouses cheat on spouses young girls go out for sexual activity even with married men of course with peers too 
and in the end you all know that we have HIV this is the season of high infestation of HIV this is a season of high heart breaking now how about church if you go to Mkurumba Road or Nasa you try to go in there you'll find envelopes being printed gift for Christmas gift for Christmas and what is the money used for in the end the poor remain poor those who need charity remain wanting what usually is given out is for a show but the real hard dimes go into people's pockets for lavish lifestyles throughout the year that comes of course probably we also need to add on the new year celebrations that are now accompanying christmas festivities you all know that Nambole, Kololo, Nachibu, and so all are near. And what are the pastors, what are the clergy targeting? It's people's coffers. It has nothing to do with the plight of the masses. I think it is paganization of Christianity that has caused all this. You get pagan idols, pagan things, import them, Christianize them. Eventually, if they can if you cannot change them they must change you and where are we today that pagans paganism has conquered christianity because of the christianization of pagan values what do we see today i've talked about fraud in church many pastors many across the board whether catholics whether anglican whether pentecostals only the Ad the adventists by the way do not celebrate christmas the adventists do not celebrate christmas and for them they don't honor it but the rest of the christian faith who celebrate christmas are now busy for money and what will happen on the christmas day the message will be brief because people do not come in church to hear the message some come in to show because they come in with new clothing they come in with new shoes some who have spent years looking for spouses and targeting them on christmas that's when newcomers come in church you can try it out churches filled to the brim people even sit outside and then you wonder where are they in the rest of the year? Men are going to church on Christmas, probably New Year, and on Easter. And the rest of the, the, rest of the year, they, they turn their backs against the church. Why? <coughs> Europe was the first to be Christianized after the Middle East where Jesus was. But what has happened in Europe? What happened in Europe? The rottenness in the church compelled many people to turn their backs against not only the church but against god and then atheism took over europe and that's why in europe they are about two or between two and five percent go to church the rest do not and then we name ourselves the western names which have nothing to do with god which have nothing to do with christianity but are now full of pagan christianity salvation is a personal matter you don't need a church to, to know god you don't need a church to go to heaven what you need is a personal relationship with your god after jesus said in john no in matthew eleven twenty eight, come to me all you that labor and i have a little and i'll give you rest he never said come to me through my leg come to me through a religion come to me through a church so it's wrong to promote a religion and religionizing everything has caused a problem and has gradually eroded the meaning of christmas the power of christmas the essence of christmas why probably that day was set aside that no okay even if it's a pagan feast let us hold our celebrations together with them so that we can have time to win them all 
because they are they are flag they on holiday we can't even look them out but now it has gradually lost meaning because of what i'm citing if you go to church and find a totally shrewd businessman promoting his business giving you an envelope promising you a miracle yet promising you empty air, empty air and at the end of another year you'll still be as poor as a church mouse okay those are what we call religious merchants interested in making money and a guise of religion whose bottom line is profit not really disseminating the truth about jesus christ now the believers what do we see believers doing this christmas they will go to church definitely they will go with their money and with their money they will think that they can pay god to do for them what they want which is totally unchristian people who think they can brave god god is not brave god. the truth is that god exists the truth is that you can be disillusioned by religion and not believe in religion but at least have the cutters of acknowledging that god exists christ came let me tell you this there are two major contradicting religions one is islam and the other is christianity in its totality no matter the denomination both disagree on the character of jesus christ but then they agree on the following one that christ jesus was born they agree he lived they agree he had a following they agree okay he is in heaven they disagree on his death the bible teaches jesus christ died and rose the quran says they never killed him they never touched him that is the fourth surah surah maida the 157 up to around 58 59 higher the Quran says they said they killed him, but they did it. God brought someone who appeared like him, and they got that one and hung him. Because the Quran says God is all wise. He took him to himself. And they both agree, the Bible and Quran, that Christ Jesus will come back. The Bible says he's coming back as a judge. The Quran says he's coming back as a witness. Abu Huraira says he's coming back as a judge and as a witness. I think my brother the Muslim knows Abu Huraira. Okay? Now, my argument has always been whether he comes back as a judge, as the Bible says, or he comes back as a witness, as the Quran says, and uh, as judge and witness, as Abu Huraira says, I maintain that no matter how he comes back, he doesn't alter his status on that day he will have authority over you whether you believed him or you didn't and i would rather you believe him and then you find on that day that he doesn't come back in was alive than not believe him and find on that day that you are actually facing him either as a judge or as a witness and then you say i wish i wish i had believed him i wish i wish i believed him so rather you believe him and find that it was a box it was a lie he never lived and he would never come back then find him then meet him face to face and then he asks you why did you revive me why did you never believe me no matter you may be a skeptic I'm a skeptic of religion, but I'm a believer of Jesus Christ. I'm a believer of God. And why am I skeptic of religion? Because religion has disillusioned many, many people. I believe in having a personal relationship with your God because you need that to go to heaven. Not man, not a religion, not a doctor, not a PhD holder, not an archbishop, not a reverend not a father not even a shape you need that personal relationship now 
There's a lot of pretense of believers. And Christianity has been spoiled. And Christmas actually delegated. What do I mean? Because there would be icons of morality, biblical morality, do not represent it anymore. They live lives that contradict what they profess. So what has happened is that even Christians, the believers, have become hypocrites. And there is a lot of hypocrisy. And they say what they cannot do. They confess what they cannot say. They do what they cannot say. They live a totally hypocritical life. But then they emulate the leaders, the pastors, the clergy, the fathers, who take an oath of celibacy and then take people's wives or engage in homosexuality. Who hold big Bibles and then defraud? Who hold big Bibles and with young girls whom they claim to pray for with anointing and oil and then as they anoint their private parts, they sexually take advantage of them. All that is happening and we cannot deny it and it is disillusioning many. And the question to many is, if that is what is happening, then is Christmas still relevant? Does it make sense? The truth is that once the teachings do not make sense, people say what they cannot do, then it means that what you are propagating is actually losing sense. And sooner or later, you go on the streets of Kampala, you go to those shops, you'll be shocked. And in offices, many people have at one time or another believed in Christ as Savior and Lord. Many have quit the church. Many now have their personal relationship with God through Christ, but they have no business with church. I believe the best way forward would be to reflect, not to slaughter cows, not to slaughter chicken, not to celebrate, not to dance, not to even go and hear a corrupted gospel, but to sit in the confines of your bedroom, in the confines of your room, and reflect, why did Jesus come? Why is it that his path has been corrupted? Why is it that instead of doing good, people are now doing bad? And it has led very many young people to turn their backs, not only against the church, but against God. And they question his existence. For those of you who are questioning the existence of God, I'm telling you, He exists. He exists. You cannot explain why you are what you are. Science has failed to explain the origin of man. Even when they talk about, how do they call it? Uh, evolution. It cannot have started from nothing. Someone must have initiated the process. That person who initiated the, whoever initiated the, pro, the process. Okay, you may not be, but you say, that supreme being who initiated the, pro, the, the, the process of creation, of evolution. If for everything there is a beginning, then there must be a beginning of evolution. It cannot have started out of the blue. There must have been a power to push it. And when you see how things are, you can plan and then God disrupts your plan. Then I believe prudence dictates that. Rather than question the birth of Christ, forget about the day he was never born on Christmas. At least believe what he stood for. What does the Bible say? Christ was born. What does the Quran say? He lived. What do both say? He's in heaven. The Bible says he died and rose. The Quran said, says he never he was never killed, but he was taken to heaven alive. Both agree he will come back. Because of that, those authentic books. I don't think there is a philosopher who has written a better book than the Bible. And probably the book that comes next to the Bible is the Quran. When you read both, they make sense. I don't think there is an author, whether we with the PhDs, the people who wrote this Bible did not have PhDs. But you read it and read it and you read it. And every time you read it, it makes sense. 
So let us believe what the Bible says without question. But of course with reason. After all, Jesus, God says in Isaiah 1, Come now, let us reason together. God expects you to reason. Not to merely believe, because you have to believe. You can put aside the church, you can put aside religion, and focus on the message and the messenger who is Jesus Christ. He died, he was born, he died, he rose, he's alive, he will come back. And for that, let us believe what is written about him in the Bible. After all, in the Bible, no death is mentioned about his birth. So let us believe him for what he says about himself and what those people who wrote about him in the Bible say about him. May God give you wisdom, prudence, and of course, diligence in all that you do so that you take the right decision. Not merely argue because you can talk or because you can be listened to. And use the forums that you have to put out reason, not merely senseless talk. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, I know that uh, the message was uh, arriving very well. We shall now have a very few minutes uh, with uh, the pastor who came latest. First of all, I want to talk about this first. What does it mean to us? This is what I want to talk about first. Uh, okay, a little bit louder. Uh, I want to talk about God. God. Before he was God, I believe that he was a self-existence one. That he couldn't be advised by somebody, he does things the way he wants. Now in him, he had attributes. And one of the attributes that he had was the attribute of love. Secondly, he had the attribute of a healer. Thirdly, he was a savior. He was a healer minus anyone being lost. He was a savior without anyone getting it. You see this? So when we try to see him, we shall get to know that really he had the attitude of love inside him. So when God had to create all his creation and lastly he created man, the Bible tells us that he rested on the seventh day, but God came and rested in a man. When he came and rested in the man, what separated God and man was sin. When Adam had to sin, God had to leave Adam and go back. And really from that day, everything left its condition. When Adam had to sin, and I want to tell you that why are people suffering, tossed with the situation? Because people have left the word of God. And now let us come and try to see. When God wanted to express the attribute, that was inside him, the attribute of love. God had to put Adam. And really, the Bible tells us that really God saw that Adam was his own image. He was happy when God rested in Adam. What happened? Really, Adam sinned. After sinning, God went back. After going back, God had to look for a way to come and redeem Adam. Now I want to talk about the law of redemption. Adam knew very well what had happened between when he was in the word of God and when he was outside the word of God. Now, every spiritual man who is here, when something is going to happen to you accidentally, you will first be informed. The spirit of the Lord will warn you that there will be a terrible accident. Now, when we see Adam knew the law of redemption, when Adam had to change his eyes, we other believe in God. We believe that we are creatures and they are, if we are creatures, they have to be a creator. So, the creator have to draft it in his own plan that I have to pay a price to redeem my people back to me. Thank you, uh, the pastors, uh, for that uh, wonderful discussion. Of course, I, I disagree with the much of what you have said and you have actually even heard that uh, uh, for him, the Christmas is in March, eh? and that's the confusion now. These guys are so confused that they will never agree on a single thing. Yet I'm going to ask a few things they are saying, and what actually people are saying in the audience. I've heard of this business on pagans, you know, and I wonder who is a pagan. I always ask myself, if I don't believe in this white money thing, eh? am I a pagan? 
you know, I don't understand. I always question that paganism. Who draws? Who is a pagan and who is holy? So I, I always wonder why should I be a pagan? He was not talking about me, but that language comes, and many of you are a pagan. You are what? You know. So to me, it confuses me. Let's say that as a shamanist, as an atheist, I believe in humanity. I want to good to people. That's why I support Pastor Mali because he's believing in what I believe. To me, they are, are together. Whether I don't believe in anything or not, at least the courts will share it. Now, I still um, do believe. Um, <clears throat> because people are telling me, actually, Pastor Mali said something uh, very interesting, and I've heard it several times as I conclude. Eh? Uh, uh, I've heard in so many meetings. Someone tells you, I think, be careful. You know, Jose actually is a septic. <laughs> Jose is my workmate. <laughs> he says, you never know whether God may be there or not. Be careful. What if you find God there? Just like Pastor Malan said. <laughs> and let me answer them. They have been answering uh, Jose and many other friends of mine. And then I tell them that if I meet God, assuming heaven is there, I want to assume heaven is there. And I meet this man, God, God. Is he a man or a woman? Or a spirit? I don't know. Now, and he tells me, the way Pastor Mara was asking, why did you believe in me? You only the one who was believing in me. I will tell him, God, very reckless. You never talk to me even one day. In those days of the bed, I'm told you could come and manifest yourself. People could even see you. But why did you talk to me? You are agents, we are fraud discards, we are rapists, we are sodomites. So there's no way I could believe you are agents. We are so bad and rotten. That's why God, I never believed in you. I never answered to God. Thank you very much. There are chemicals which are associated with the light. I'm talking about something. How come that those chemicals, you find them in viruses, in bacteria, in plants, in other animals, including you. The specific chemicals which are seen there, how can that be an accident? At least I'm not an accident. I'm designed. And definitely, if I'm designed, I must be designed. And God asks him why he never believed him. He'll tell him. I couldn't believe you existed because your agents, God, you were so reckless. Because all I could see was your agents involved in sodomy, raping girls, raping boys, robbing people and so on and so forth. Fine, you may have that excuse. But you are a lawyer. Or you are studying law. You are a lawyer. I think you know the, you, you call it a maxim. Ignorance is not defense. Ignorance is no defense. And no, 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 no. Do you believe in that maxim as a lawyer? That ignorance is no defense? Fine, 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 fine. If you are taken to court, can you say that I never knew that this law existed? It never knew existence. There was no evidence. No. There is evidence that there is a supreme being who is in charge of everything so that there is no chaos at least universally let me conclude that with that you may argue and argue and argue but ignorance is no defense since you're a lawyer you should understand that now you asked about pagan the truth is that uh, even pagans believe in something i think what it should be understood is that there is a difference between a pagan and an atheist. An atheist claims he does not believe in God. But a pagan may believe in one God and not another. A small God or a big God. A God or Buddha or whatever. But in the end, that person will believe in something. So, according to Christians, if you don't believe in Christianity, then you become a pagan. And of course, even the Muslims, if you don't believe in Islam, you become a pagan. Okay? Even uh, Buddhists, if you don't believe in Buddhism, you're a pagan. So, whoever does not believe in what you believe in, becomes a pagan. So I think that should be understood. An atheist claims not to believe in God. But when they believe, they also believe in something. Even atheists believe in themselves. 
because they believe in their prowess, they believe in their ability, they believe in their aptitude, they believe in their intelligence, they believe in their, in their power, I have made myself. The pagans do not believe they can make themselves. They, 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 they attribute their success to God. Now, finally, this is my urgent call. And it calls for diligence. No matter what is said, Christ was never born on Christmas, nor will he ever be born on Christmas Day. That is 25th December. And it's wrong for my brother to assume that Christ was born in March. Because he simply counts July, June. And he says, if Christ was born in a six month, the nine month end in March. There is, you know the calendars differ. There is the Julian calendar, there is the, the Orthodox calendar, there is the Jewish calendar. So, the Bible talks about the Jewish calendar, the Islamic calendar. So it's wrong to assume that Christ was born in March. There you are also in error. You actually don't know when Christ was born. Because Christ was never born in March. This calendar that we have, which has 12 months, came later on. Do you, do you, professor, do you know who originated it? Julian? Yeah, it was far later after the birth of Christ. But when the Bible was being written, it was not done. So it cannot be the six months called June. Now finally, if you're a Christian, go and do the work of the Good Samaritan. If you're a Christian, you'll have understood the birth of Christ much more because you'll have obeyed his message. The, import, the, the essential is to obey the message. How, where, is not what is important. Not the date he was born. Because after all, he was never born on Christmas. Do not over celebrate. Yet the person you celebrate for does not even believe that that day should be celebrated. And I believe that is why God did that. It's not bad if you believe that Christ was born on Christmas and then you do good on that day. But it is bad to believe that Christ was born on Christmas and then you do all wrong on that day. And you cause people like my brother, Pato, and all these others to become disillusioned. And then they say, we have no business with God. Thank you very much. We we'll meet you next time.